Hello and welcome to Multimedia Video Systems Part 12. Excellent. Okay, today we're going to look at the video displays. So we've had like, quite a look at creating multimedia, but we should possibly have an understanding of how we're going to display that, and pretty much the way you're going to display it is on some kind of video display. <coughs> Obviously, there are a huge number of video displays you could be using. Uh, you could have an old school cathode ray tube, very good for uh, producing very high quality. Um, but generally, you're probably going to be displaying on some kind of flat panel display. And generally, that's probably going to be an LCD, a liquid crystal display. It might, in certain circumstances, be a gas plasma, a plasma uh, screen. Generally, large displays are often plasma. Um, and possibly you might be using a projector display. Okay, so the projector, we've got a back projector working in today's presentation, but projecting it onto a screen. So <coughs> what we're going to look at is the two key uh, display technologies, and really those are LCDs and plasmas. And just to give you an idea of the, how they work and the advantages and the disadvantages of those two display types. So if you're producing a multimedia presentation, then this is the sort of thing you need to know to choose the actual display device you're going to use at the end. So by far the most common flat panel technology that we come across today is LCDs. Who's got an LCD TV at home? Hey, okay, who's got CRT? An old big glass tube? Real students, excellent, okay. Um, who's got a plasma? Nobody, nobody can afford a plasma, right? Nor can I. Um, but the main type you're going to come across is LCDs. All of the monitors in the lab are LCD displays. Generally, m the vast majority of computer monitors nowadays are LCDs. If you want a CRT computer monitor, you can pick one up for next to nothing, or in fact, nothing, because people are chucking them away, whereas LCD monitors are the standard. So LCDs work by reflectively, uh, reflectively selectively blocking and filtering light, so letting light through or not letting light through. Uh, generally, that's because, uh, they have a light source at the back, which can either be reflective, which is what you get with very cheap calculators, where you, you're relying on uh, external light to light it via a mirror at the back, or more commonly by some kind of back or edge lit uh, source, which is either generally LEDs. On, on a lot of modern LCDs, it's an LED light, um, but uh, uh, traditionally it would be some kind of electrofluorescent light bit like um, fluorescent tubes okay, at the back there. And what you're producing, it producing is a bright, white, even light at the back of your display, and then you're selectively stopping it. So how does that work? Well, uh, it all works around these things called liquid crystals. So we need to understand a bit about liquid crystal theory. So light comes in waves, or one analogy is it comes in waves. And it comes in waves in different orientations. So we can think of light as waves in all kinds of different orientations. Okay, and this is my trying to describe this 3D phenomenon in 2D. Uh, so we can see there's different or, um, orientations of light, different angles it comes in at. Okay, and LCDs work by selectively, selectively blocking certain orientations of light. So how does it do that? Well, if we have a polarized piece of glass, it will only let light through in a certain orientation. In this case, it's something in a, a light in a horizontal orientation. All the other light gets stopped by this. Only light in a one set orientation will actually pass through the polarized light. So that's fantastic. Um, th that's just one sheet of polarized light. If we took a second sheet and we polarized it in the other direction, now nothing can get through. You can just think of it as two grids. One is a horizontal and one's a vertical. If light goes through the first one, it won't get through the second one. Yeah? So now we can stop light by using two sheets of glass which have this polarizing grill effect on them. Well, that's great. We know if we've got one sheet of glass, some light will go through. And if we've got two sheets of glass and they're 90 degrees um, uh, at angles, 90 degrees to each other, then we won't get any light through. So really, we've got the basis of a display technology here. But we can't, what we can't really do is have a whole load of little bits of glass which we're going to rotate very quickly between 90 degrees uh, out of phase and in phase. That just wouldn't work, would it, really? You couldn't have a screen made up of millions of pixels, each one of which had a little couple of sheets of glass in front of it and we were twisting them. Wouldn't work, would it? Or would it? 
maybe I've just developed a new display technology. No, it wouldn't work. It's just impossible to do. So what we actually need to do is we need to develop something that will take the light, which is passing through the first sheet of glass, and bend it through 90 degrees in this case, so it passes through the second sheet of light. If we can do that, if we could stick something in the middle, then we could do that. That light in one orientation gets bent and goes through the second sheet. That's the only way light's going to get through those two sheets of glass, those two sheets of polarised glass. And that is essentially how liquid crystal works. We have... Uh, <coughs> OK, so... Um, actually, so how do we make these filters? How do we change that orientation of light? Well, that's what the liquid crystal in a liquid crystal display is doing. And it's actually a, uh, a chemical. It's a liquid crystal. is a, a series of molecules called uh, pneumatic molecules. And they twist light, which is great. But we could just dump a load in there, and it would twist light, and the light would come out. Well, that doesn't help us, because we want some way of stopping the light being twisted as well, so that we can say the light goes through or the light doesn't go through. So an important uh, property of these pneumatic molecules is that they will twist light. And if we get some LCD material and we put it between two polarized planes of glass, which are 90 degrees uh, uh, out of phase, it will actually bend the light, and the light will go through. But the key thing about uh, liquid crystals is that if we apply a power source to it, we can change what it does to the light. We can, in fact, we can stop it bending the light. And we stop it bending the light, we stop the light getting through. So if we look at a simple LCD display, all LCD displays generally, and it's a very, very simple light calculator, have a backlight. So you've got some light source which you're trying to block or not block. On top of that, you're going to need a polarizing filter. So our first filter here is a horizontal one. So only horizontal light, light in a horizontal orientation, will come through that filter. We can just think of it as a, as a mesh, as a grill that will only let light through in one orientation. On top of that, we have a sheet of glass with a common electrode film. All we need to know about this is it just looks like a piece of glass but it conducts electricity, so we can apply electricity to it. On top of that, we're going to put our, uh, our liquid crystal, okay, so this is just our liquid crystal chemical, and then on top of that, we're going to have to put our uh, electrodes, which in this case, we've got special electrodes, which are shaped to give us a display. So now, because we've got electrodes here, and we had that, um, and we had that uh, conductive sheet, at the back, and we've got the, electro and we've got the pneumatic, pneumatic molecules in between, if we apply a current, we can twist or untwist the, the actual molecules in between. So this is characteristic, this is the sort of thing that you see on a, um, uh, on a, on a calculator, uh, and a seven segment display. So if we stick a polarizing filter in front of that, we can either bend the light to go through or not bend the light to go through. And in fact, uh, that's what we do. OK, so default by default, these, these crystals are twisted. So if the planes of your glass are 90 degrees out of phase, you put the pneumatic material in between, light will pass through. Light will go in, be bent through 90 degrees, and come out the other one. OK, so that's why when you, uh, when you get your calculator, and you, without the power on, and you look at the display, the display is blank. OK, light is coming through light's going in and being reflected black. When you turn it on, the numbers come up as black. That's because you're now applying power to it. It's applying power to the actual uh, liquid crystal material, and that's now untwisting. So the light is no longer bent. It comes in horizontal, doesn't get bent, meets the vertical polarizing filter, can't get through. So it's now you can't, uh, so it now goes black. So you've blocked the light. So <coughs> applying current stops the light from being bent, stops the light from passing through. 